Hey, it's Christina Carlisle, and welcome back to week two of the Mind Right Body Type program. So glad you're joining me. This week, we're going to review everything we went over last week. I'm going to give you a few new tools and assignments. So let's just jump right into it. When you're trying to establish a weight loss program, you don't want to dread eating healthy. You don't want to dread going to the gym. When we enjoy eating healthy, when we enjoy exercising, when we actually want to do it, when our minds are right, we can get our body tight and keep it tight. The problem though with the diet and the exercise is we get started, we get excited, we get motivated, we're going, we're going, we're going, and then something happens that triggers us to slip. So this week is all about finding out what we struggle with and learning how to overcome it so that we actually want to go forward and stick with it. Here's the thing though, you can't fix the problem unless you don't know what the problem is, right? So I could I could jump off with a bunch of different workouts and ways to tailor your, your, your eating and give you a big list of foods that blast fat, how to make your plate, how to do all of that. But if we don't know what's what's going to trip us up in the future, if we don't know what's what we're gonna struggle with in the future, or if we can't master what's, what makes us stop or hit the pause button, or when that little voice comes in our, our head and says, you can have seconds, you can have dessert, you can skip the gym, let's go to happy hour instead. The gym sucks. If you don't know how to silence that little voice and get your mind right, it's really, really, really difficult to get your body tight. So let's do a quick recap of what we learned last week. Last week we learned of the five factors that help fat loss. Remember, it's not just diet and exercise. Diet and exercise are the two main components, but we also know that we have to balance our stress, we have to hydrate and drink water, and we also have to sleep. When these five factors are in place, and balanced and in harmony, our body will release fat faster. So now I want to wrap with you. We're gonna reflect and then act in a positive way. So let's think about where we struggled last week. Remember I said we're gonna calculate our calorie deficit, we're gonna stay below 40 grams of sugar a day, we're going to drink water, we're gonna really focus on lowering our stress, we're gonna focus on getting at least seven hours of quality sleep a night. And we're also going to exercise. I gave you the one, four, three weight cardio program. So let me ask you, where did you struggle? Let's re reflect together. Pause this if you need to. Take notes if you need to. Where did you struggle last week? I know myself personally, I struggle with water. I am, when it's time to eat, I'm like a hungry, hungry hippo. I want to garble it all down and I'm looking at this big glass of water like, oops. I also know that I struggled a day or two with sleep. I also know that I was really, really, really stressed out. Um, and I, w I was really taking a conscious, making a conscious effort though to breathe and just really try to prioritize and be really patient and kind to myself. So that's where I struggled. Where did you struggle? You really want to focus on what happened. Was it the sleep? Did you did you not turn off the TV? Were the kids making you crazy? Was your partner snoring? What was it? Did you find that you were reaching for food when you weren't truly hungry? Did you go over your calorie deficit? Well, what can we do moving forward to act? Take action. So R, reflect, act in a positive way. Meaning it's going to help us get to our goal. If you need to shift calories around or really pay attention to serving sizes or really make it a point to track, weigh yourself, whatever the case may be, that's what I want you to focus on this week. I'm not personally talking to you. I mean, I'm talking to you, but I'm not one-on-one -on -one with you, so I can't drill down and give you specific things to consider implementing into your life. So you need to do that for yourself. So that's the first thing I want you to think about. What really needs work and attention and focus and awareness that you need to work on and then work it. Now we're going to work on our tracking. So did you take your pictures? Did you take your measurements? Did you weigh yourself? Starting week two, did you weigh yourself the same way? Did you notice any difference in the way that your clothes were fitting and did your measurements change? Did you see a difference in the pictures? If you did and the scale went down, awesome. If this, if you did everything but the number on the scale didn't go down, 
do not panic. The scale measures total body weight, right? So it's your fat, your muscle, your bones, your organs, your hair, your this, your that, all of it. The measurements and the pictures are going to measure total fat loss, right? We want to lose the fat. We don't want to lose the muscle. We don't want to lose our organs. We're trying to focus on the fat. So taking the scale measurements is going to measure it all. Taking your pictures and your measurements are going to gauge our fat loss. So when you step on the scale and you see that the number goes up, the number goes down, the number goes up, but I'm doing everything perfect, what the F? When the number is fluctuating like that, there are two reasons that it fluctuates that much from day to day. If your weight's only going up and down, up and down, up and down every day, most likely it's water weight or waste weight. So are you consuming a lot of sodium? Are you having an allergic reaction? Did you have some drinks? Did you, is the moon full? I mean, there are so many things that can affect water weight. Is it, are you hormonal? I mean, so many things can affect water weight for women, men too. Another reason why it could be fluctuating is your waist weight. So have you been going to the restroom regularly? That's why it's really important that we weigh ourselves with and taking out as many variables as possible. We want the most consistent measurement, which is why we want to weigh ourselves the same way every single time. So you're going to weigh yourself first thing in the morning, same scale, naked, before you eat or drink anything and after you use the restroom. So if you weigh yourself like that, and you'll see that, oh, well, did I go to the bathroom last week? Hmm, I'm not sure. Did I have something to drink? Did I have something to eat? you'll really be able to see your weight changing. But I promise you, if you are doing everything that I'm recommending, if you are staying below 40 grams of sugar a day, if you are in your calorie deficit, if you are doing the cardio, the fat is coming off. Total body weight may not catch up to it yet. That's why it's really important that we take our pictures front and side and take our measurements. So now that we know where we're at, I'm going to give you a highlight reel of suggestions that I want you to incorporate and practice working on into the next week. First, we want to balance sleep and stress. We also want to drink at least 10 glasses of water a day. So those are the first things right off the bat. Moving forward with the food, you want to continue sticking to your calorie deficit. If you find that you run out of calories or you're eating too much in the morning, I really want you to gauge why you're going over your calorie deficit. And every time you're reaching for food, this is new, every time you're reaching for food, right, using this tool called the hunger scale. Okay, the hunger scale ranks from a negative 10, from a positive 10 to a negative 10. Zero in the middle. A negative 10 is I'm hungrier than a hostage. A zero is I'm completely content, I'm not hungry, I'm not full, my tummy's kind of flat, and a positive 10 is, I can't believe I ate the whole thing and went back for seconds. This is how you feel on Thanksgiving. All you want to do is unbutton your pants and take a nap. So uncomfortably full, it's just not even cute. So you want to stay far from this because that's not cool. You want to stay, that feeling's not cool. You want to stay far away from a negative 10 because a negative 10 can panic and cause you to overeat. So you want to stay between a positive three and a negative three. So a negative three, your tummy's actually truly going to be grumbling. You're going to experience true symptoms of physical hunger. When you're at a positive three, that's I've finished my meal. You could go back for seconds, but if you were to wait about 10 to 15 minutes, you wouldn't, you'd be good. It takes about 20 minutes for the brain to catch up with your stomach and say, hey, we're good, tap out. So the slower you eat, the more water you drink, you're gonna fill up. It's gonna give your brain a, a better chance of saying, hey, we're full, we're good, we don't need this. Thousands of calories can happen between a three and a 10, thousands. So you really wanna eat slower and be aware of how many calories you're eating at each meal and make sure you stick at your deficit. You're also gonna to wanna to stay below 40 grams of sugar a day. So if you're reaching for food, if you're picking up a fork, if you're going back for seconds, I really want you to stop and think, reflect, 
and then act in a positive way. You're gonna wrap every time you go to eat. Wrapping takes seconds, seconds, seconds. Reaching for the fridge. Am I truly hungry or is it something else? I know every time I'm reaching for food, I really have to take a step back and be like, is it stress? Is it boredom? Is it uncertainty? Is it anxiety? What is it? Am I just really sad? Am I trying to cope with something? What is it? Because it's not hunger. It's not hunger. It's not true physical hunger. Another way to gauge whether it's emotional eating or actual hunger is real hunger can wait. Emotional eating can. You want it? You want it now. You want it all. You're not going to share. Get out of my way. Let me have this. That's really how pounds pack on. You're eating for reasons other than fueling your body. So when that happens, have a glass of water, take a walk, do something else. Pick up a magazine, play on Pinterest, go on Facebook, do something else. But every time you're reaching for food, I want you to use the hunger scale in addition to sticking to your calorie deficit and under 40 grams of sugar a day. So as far as the exercise goes, I want you to continue doing the 143 cardio program I gave you last week. Remember, it's one sweaty session for 30 minutes, four times a week, and you're going to try three different exercises. So if last week, let's reflect and let's wrap again. Last week, if you found that you really just did not like what you chose, choose something else. Try something new. If you want to stick with what you did last week, that's great, but just try to beat it in some way. Whether you increase the intensity or sweat a little harder or run a little faster, whatever it is you choose, you want to beat it in some way than last week. And if you have an injury or, you're, or you don't want to sweat, you have to do 60 minutes. So sweaty Betty, 30 minutes, 60 minutes if you don't, but whatever you're choosing, do three different types and you're going to do it four times a week. <clears throat> So I want you to wrap right now on your own, reflect, what do you need to do into this coming week? Do you really need to schedule it? Do you need help? Do you need a babysitter? Do you need to tell your partner what you're doing? So they're aware that you're not, you're not playing, that this is important to you, that you're actually going to be doing this at this time in this way and that you need their support. Whatever it is, do you need to carry around a water bottle like I do I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna carry this cup of water around everywhere if I have to. I'll take it to the freaking bathroom if I have to but I'm gonna reach my water goal today and every time that little voice comes inside your head and says oh it's okay we can start next week we'll just you know we'll just start fresh on Monday every time that little voice inside your head think of it like the devil's on your shoulder saying eat it this sucks let's get the gym no Whenever that little voice is lying to you and justifying habits that are causing the fat, you need to silence it. And I want you to practice silencing it by remembering what you want and why you want it. That's the only way to master motivation. So remember last week I shared with you that I wanted to lose a couple percentages of body fat and that I wanted it for me, because I want to feel sassy in my skinny jeans again, I, I can't fit into some of my clothes, I just want it for me. I've been depressed, life happened, I was going through, I went through a car accident, a cross country move, among dozens of other things, missing family and friends, I was coping with food, ended up gaining 10 pounds. But now moving forward, my motivation was some jerk guy at a bar who said that I was fat jerk guy and I was almost excited that he said that because it pissed me off and it fired me up and that is my motivation so every time I'm reaching for food and believe me it happens a lot every time I'm thinking oh well maybe we can just go to the gym tomorrow and I'm a trainer I mean I do this all day every day and those thoughts still come so Every time those thoughts come, every time that devil's yapping on my shoulder, I'm gonna remember that jerk guy. And I'm gonna remember and visualize how awesome it's gonna feel when I strut by looking awesome and feeling awesome. It's more for me than him, but I just want that, I did this, shame on you. That's my motivation. 
whenever that voice comes and it's saying blah blah blah, you can do it. Just stay on the couch, skip the gym, go to go hang out, go relax. Just whenever that voice comes, I'm gonna think about how bad it's gonna feel if I were to gain more weight and run into the same jerk guy. So I'm also gonna use the pain of not reaching my goal to motivate myself and the pleasure of reaching my goal to motivate yourself. Really think about what it is that you want. Was it a specific dress size? Was it to fit in your skinny jeans again? Was it to get off of a medication to play with your kids, your grandkids? Whatever it was for you, remember why you want it. The pleasure associated with getting that goal, stepping on the scale, hearing the compliments, shopping for new clothes, the good, and also remember how not so great it's going to feel if it was to get worse. Because if you don't work it, if you don't do something, if you continue picking up the fork when you're not hungry, if you continue skipping the gym, if you stay in those bad habits and listen to this little voice, it's only going to get worse. So that's what I want you to focus on this coming week. If you're reaching for food, I want you to use the new tool, the hunger scale. Track everything you're eating and drinking, everything. Weigh out your serving sizes, drink your water, stay under 40 grams of sugar a day. Don't forget the MyFitnessPal app. If you just want to kick it old school with a piece of paper and a comp book, I mean, that's, that's what I do. Weigh everything out, measure out your serving sizes, write it down, how are you feeling, and don't forget your 143 exercise program. And also be aware of how you're feeling when you go and when you don't go. If you start to feel bad or guilt or shame or remorse or regret, that means you're listening to the voice. So if you ate it when you weren't truly hungry, if you skipped the gym, the little voice will go silent, but you'll feel. If you do what you set out to do and work in a way that works for you for your goal, you'll never feel that way. As long as you're in your deficit, take positive action, reflect what you need to do, shift your calories around, stay away from sugar, put your sneakers on, and just do it. You will never regret doing something that's good for you. The first step is always the hardest, and if you can silence this little devil, that little voice, you're going to get your mind right and your body tight. We want to want to go to the gym. We want to want to eat healthy. We want to step on that scale and see results. So when our mind gets right, our body gets tight. Now that we're building this foundation, next week, I'm going to dig deep into how to get your food right. And when you start eating certain foods and certain combinations, certain meals, certain ways, your metabolism is going to skyrocket. And that's when the fat really starts to come off. You're going to watch that number on the scale plummet. Until then, I'm your biggest cheerleader. It works if you work it. So work it. You're worth it. I'll see you next time. Bye.